If you've ever cut a block of cheese with a knife, you know how sticky it gets to the knife. Now, as you can see here, this cheese slicer cuts right through some cheese here, and you can cut even slices with ease. Now I'm going to show you how you can make one of these yourself. Follow along. Now to give you a quick rundown of what I did, first I grabbed some lumber from the scrap bin that I thought would make a nice cheese slicer. I made a board that was nine and a half inches by five and three quarter inch, and then I made a drilling jig to where I can actually drill the side. And then I made a groove for the wire, and that has to be at an angle, so that was really interesting. Then I rounded over the edges, sanded and put a finish on it, and then I installed the arm in the wire. Now let me show you how I put this all together and how you can make one yourself as well. Now I found some lumber from the scrap bin, some walnut, and some red heart, a little bit of uh, curly maple, even found some curly cherry and some regular cherry. And I'm figuring out the arrangement of how I wanted to ar arrange the actual boards. And then I cut all the boards to about the same length. Uh, this way they're manageable and uh, I don't have to deal with a bunch of different lengths of, of lumber. And then at the joiner, I jointed uh, one side to get all the boards nice and flat on one side because these boards were all different thicknesses. So I actually needed to get them thickness to the same thickness. Now to get them to the same thickness, I used my drum sander because uh, they were, they all had some different grain patterns in each of these. I didn't want to send them through my planer because that could have caused a lot of tear out, uh, especially on the curly maple. Uh, the curly maple would have definitely torn out. So I ended up sending them through my drum sander to, to save that, that grain. And a quick high speed glue up here. Now this is where I'm going to spend most of my time here on this video. Uh, I'm making a jig so I can actually drill a vertical hole. Now this hole is where the arm will actually go into the, the board for the slicer. And this needs to be drilled four inches deep. So you can try to drill that just with a hand drill, uh, but trying to get that to actually drill in straight uh, is quite a challenge. So I'm actually going to be making quite a few of these, so I decided to actually make a jig so I can actually replicate these uh, pretty, pretty easily. So making this jig, I was basically making just a, a right angle piece here that will actually allow me to have a big vertical fence that I can set up at the drill press. Um, so it's actually a really simple jig to actually set up here. And I'm also going to provide some PDF plans for you guys to actually have for this if you want to actually create this jig yourself uh, for your own drill press. Now your drill press table may be different than mine, but has the same principle. Mine will actually mount onto my drill press um, with some T-slot lockdowns but you can actually just clamp this thing down to your drill press table in any way that you want to. This is the point where it's kind of getting more critical. I needed to make sure that this portion here was nice and square. So I, ne I ended up pulling out my square and clamping this together to make sure that both edges were square in both of these corners. Um, just to make sure that once I screw these two pieces together that when I, when I put my boards in here, they'll be set up and, and in, the, in the exact same position every single time. My drill press table has a couple T-slots that I can actually kind of take advantage of. So what I'm doing here is actually drilling a couple holes that I can use to put a couple uh, T-slot lockdowns in. 
And this way I can actually just lock this jig into place using those and not have to worry about getting a couple clamps. Now if your drill press table does not have that, you can merely just clamp this thing down into place and, and use that. But when I'm actually making a bunch of these boards at one time, I like to just have this thing locked down and, and go with that. Now the board is done with the glue up. I can actually flatten one side and I'm just barely, barely cleaning off the glue and uh, getting this board flat again. And I had quite a bit of excess cherry on there. and I uh, could have trimmed that board down originally, but I wasn't too worried about it. So now I'm getting the board completely down to size. And originally I had mentioned the board size is gonna be nine and a half inches by five and three quarter inches. So that's what I'm measuring out and getting it squared down to right now. Now what I made is actually a little riser block out of a piece of half inch plywood. So this is half inch thick and I made it to where it is actually five eighths of an inch wide and six and a half inches long. Now that six and a half inches tells me how far away to set up my stop block and that'll be how far away the actual cut line will be for the actual kerf. Now I'm using a thin kerf blade to actually put a thin kerf for this actual cut and this riser block will actually cause this cut to be cut at an angle and then I raise the blade to where it's actually just a little bit above that half inch so it'll actually clear the hole on the one side because it needs to make sure I need to make sure that it actually clears the hole so the actual arm will actually go all the way through that hole then a quick pass with the table saw makes a nice clean cut now with that done, I rounded off all the edges. Now I start off rounded over the corners and then I'll round over all the edges. This way I get a nice round over around the entire board. And sanding, lots and lots of sanding. Always our favorite part of this. Uh, but I always like to sand uh, and get this sanded down to 400 grit just to get a nice smooth finish. And then uh, I add my brand to it. Uh, if you don't have one of these brands, uh, it's a good way to mark your work. Um, I, I, I really like having one of these burning brands just uh, to put on there. Uh, it definitely mark your work in, in some way. Uh, it gives a good way to, to have your work on there, if, if anything. Uh, you can even just use a sharpie to mark your work and, and put a finish over that. That, that should last a good while. Uh, but if you don't have just a wood burner, sign your work in some way. For a finish, I'm actually using General Finish's Salad Bowl Finish. Um, what I like about this for the cheese boards is it, it's uh, first off a food safe finish and also it ends up with a, an actual hardening finish. Uh, so it's kind of like a varnish um, and it, it leaves a very, very nice finish. Uh, it's still like an oil-based finish, so uh, very, very nice finish to use on, on this type of board. Installing the hardware is actually really simple. You just slide the arm through the hole that you drilled and uh, that arm will actually catch the wire on the way through. So you actually just Slip that through there, catch the wire, and the other end of the wire is actually on the handle itself, and the handle will get caught by the other end of the, the arm. Now the arm is flexed a little bit. Uh, it doesn't come, it's not a perfect square C, it's kind of got a flex to it, so um, once you get that put together uh, and you actually put the handle into that, that other side, you'll actually 
flex the handle in and it puts the tension on the wire itself. Then there'll be a little set screw that you put through there and the arm has a small hole as well that the set screw will match up with. So you just put that set screw through there, actually screw that in and it'll match into that little hole and you're all set. And as you can see behind the scenes I was actually making six of these all at once. Um, I was making one of these, the one that is on the video, for my wife and then I was making a few others uh, to sell.